Welcome or welcome back, Cyber Explorers. It's Alfie, and in this video we'll explore together with this step-by-step -step guide how to install Linux Mint 22, separate disk, standalone. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First let's clarify the title. Separate disk means that we will install Linux Mint on its own disk. So get your disk ready and ensure you don't need anything on that disk because it will be formatted. Standalone means there will be no other operating system connected to the PC during the Linux Mint installation process. So if you want to install Linux Mint this way and you have a Windows installation on the PC already, disconnect the Windows disk. After you finish the Linux Mint installation, reconnect the Windows disk, and you will be able to switch between the systems, Windows and Linux Mint, from the boot menu, or from the BIOS or UEFI or other ways. This way. We ensure that the Grub Boot Loader will be installed on the Linux Mint disk and not on the Windows disk. Second, you will need a Linux Mint 22 installation media, such as a Linux Mint 22 bootable USB drive. Our video on how to create a Linux Mint 22 bootable USB drive with Rufus might help you. The link is in the description below. Third, you will need to insert the USB drive into the computer, then restart the PC and access the BIOS or UEFI. Adjust the boot priority to boot from the USB drive, or you can enter the boot menu and boot from the USB drive directly. Our video on how to boot from a USB drive might help you. The link is in the description below. When you first boot to the Linux Mint installation media, choose Start Linux Mint. If you encounter any issues, select the Start Linux Mint compatibility mode option. Now you can try Linux Mint if you want. Then click on Install Linux Mint icon to install it. At the Welcome to Linux Mint screen, choose your language and click Continue. Then select your keyboard layout and click Continue. Then check Install Multimedia Codecs and click Continue. Now let's partition the disk. As we said, we will be installing Linux Mint on its own disk. Note that disks in Linux will show as SDA, SDB, etc., or NVMe 0N1. NVMe1N1, etc., and partitions will show as SDAE1, SDAE2, etc., or NVMe0N1P1, NVMe0N1P2, etc. Choose Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint, then click Continue. Then choose the drive to install Linux Mint on and click on Install Now, and Mint will partition the disk automatically. Or choose something else, Manual, then click Continue. If you have a brand new drive, it might show without a partition table or a free space. Just select the disk and click on New Partition Table then click Continue. If you have a used disk, you might see a few partitions already exist. Select the partitions one by one and click on the minus icon to delete the partition. The easiest partitioning scheme on a non-GPT disk is simply a root partition and a swap partition. Note, the swap partition is not required. You can use a swap file instead, as Linux Mint uses a swap file by default. If the disk is GPT type, you must also add a BIOS boot or an EFI partition depending on the boot mode of your BIOS, legacy BIOS, or UEFI. If you are planning on creating a swap partition, then allocate the system partition with max size minus swap size. The swap partition should be the same size as your RAM or double it if you have low memory RAM.
So select the free space and click on the plus icon. Choose the system partition size. Use as EFI system partition and click OK. Then select the rest of the free space and click on the plus icon. Choose the system partition size. Use as ext4. Set the mount point at forward slash or root and click OK. If you want to create a swap partition, select the rest of the free space and click on the plus icon. Specify the size you want. Set it as swap and click OK. Make sure that the device for bootloader installation is the same as your Linux Mint drive and click install now. Then review your choices and click continue. Select your time zone and click continue. Then enter your name, computer name, username, and a password for your account. Check the login automatically instead of require my password to login option if you prefer and click continue. Finally, wait for the process to finish and click restart now to reboot. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and don't forget to activate the notification bell so you won't miss out on any new uploads. Thank you for watching, until next time, see you later.